Hello everyone, this is Ariane Arsenault from La Fille de la Mer, Handmade Soaps in the Magdalene Islands. Today I am making a unicorn bubble bath bomb project. Um, many people have been asking me to make a unicorn shaped bath bombs, so as you would guess, I am not the first one to make this type of design. I did not invent this, but I don't know who did. But many people have been making uh, unicorn bath bombs in various form and here was my take at creating one. So I have posted this little guy uh, on Instagram last Friday and people went nuts and wanted a video. So here's your unicorn bubble bath bomb video. Let's go. To make these bath bombs, I have already my uh, baking soda, kale and clay, and my biodegradable glitter, which is from Kendor Soap. And I am using the bath bomb press and the medium sphere mold, but I'm using the indent top um, shape mold. So this is actually like these come together. You can buy this, the medium sphere mold and then buy the indent top if you want to pipe some frosting. So I'm going to screw this right in. And then I have my wet ingredients which are composed of sweet almond oil, I have some uh, rubbing alcohol and my melon ball fragrance that I also got from Candora. So I'm gonna mix this in with my baking soda. I'm just gonna put on my dust mask and uh, don't worry, I won't bite ya. <laughs> Now that my baking soda is combined um, with the kaolin and the wet ingredients, it's time to add the SLSA or the lathanol powder. And I always add it after because I find that it's, because it's very volatile and this is very um, irritating to your lungs. So I, I like to do it after and I, I just deposit <laughs> the SLSA very gently. And then I add my citric acid that is pre-measured right on top. There we go. And this way it doesn't poof up in the air as much and I mix on slow. And sorry my voice is a little bit um, weird because I have my dust mask on. Once everything is combined and the mix is wet, uh, I can remove my dust mask. And the one I'm using is very practical. It's called Breathe Safe. It's the authentic RZ mask. And I got this one on Amazon and I will leave a link uh, down below. And I really like it because it doesn't fog up my goggles. It's very lightweight doesn't, and it comes with this little pouch, which is super handy. So really like that one. It's made of neoprene, so it's very lightweight. I'm just going to be mixing my mix by hand just to make sure that I have everything from the bottom stirred back into this mix. For me, I find that I like to fill this mold at 155 grams in order to have a perfect sphere with the indent, uh, the indentation on top. And my compressor, which is just below my work table, is set at 50 PSI. Uh, whenever making spheres, don't go over that. It's gonna make too much pressure and your bombs will crack. And let's press. Hop. And here's the bath bomb with the indent on top and into the drying trays. Again, you can see the beautiful indent top and the perfectly round bath bomb. And I like to sit these in uh, the drying trays because these are made to go alongside the bath bomb press and the sphere molds and you never get a flat bottom with these. For my other unicorn, I am using a amethyst water soluble dye by the Fizz Fairy and it's already pre-mixed in my wet ingredient and I am using this galactic grape fragrance that I got at Candora and it smells so good. It smells like something magic. So that's why I chose it to go in the second unicorn. Mm -hmm. 
I always work on a scale and I, I won't stress this enough. If you want to have consistent bath bomb and even like some molds will work better if they're filled at a specific weight. So work on a scale. This will really help you uh, when you're making bath bombs. So, oh, and look at this purple. Isn't it magical? I think so. <laughs> A few people have contacted me because they're struggling uh, using the bath bomb press and they would like to have an outside point of view uh, on using it. And one of the things that I can say is that other machines and other uh, way of making bath bomb formulas, like if you hand press them, the formulas will include much more wet ingredients. And um, for some reason, the bath bomb press works better with a drier mix. So maybe try that. And also, if you've been using cornstarch in your formula, cornstarch is sticky. You know, it thickens up your sauces when you cook with it. So it does the same in your bath bombs. It becomes sticky and then it sticks to the mold and then it's difficult to unmold. So maybe try these two things uh, next time you make a batch. I will be making a third unicorn uh, bubble bath bomb and I don't know what to scent it, but I want the bath bomb to be light pink and I took out these three fragrance oil. I have Fruity Fusion from Brambleberry. I also have Kiwi Strawberry uh, from Kendora Soap and also from Kendora Soap I have Rose Water Lemonade. So I'm gonna put a poll right up there. You just click the I and you tell me which fragrance is your favorite and the most votes. I will make the bath bomb in that scent and I will post the result via the community tab here on my YouTube channel and also via my other social media such as Instagram and my Facebook page. For the horns, I use these little um, unicorn horn charms and they are something you can keep after you have used the bath bomb. And for the ears, I poured some uh, melton pour, some pink and some blue into a silicone uh, tray. And then I just cut them down like this. And then I'll just cut them again and make little triangles. Once all of my little ears are ready, I line them up in bunches of two so that whenever I am ready to pipe my frosting, we can just grab them and stick them on right away. The formula that I am using today for the icing of these bath bombs was shared with me by my friend Irene from Body Bon Bon. So this is a formula that she was selling on her website. It is not online right now, but I believe it will be um, coming back soon as she wanted to update it uh, recently. So it's a sugar-free formula that is uh, made with surfactants. And so this, this is my uh, surfactants that have been combined and heated so that they completely melt and combine. And to this, I'm going to add some cream of tartar, some baking soda, and my fragrance oil. So let's start with the baking soda as it's already pre-measured and sifted. And cream of tartar is now going to be added. And the size of this recipe should be just enough to make my 40, uh, my 40 unicorns. Okay, let's move this away from the heat. And I'm gonna slowly stir this in. And you will see that because there's cream of tartar and baking soda in there, it will start to puff up <laughs> and that is normal. So what I do is that I wait for everything to puff up and then go back down. So I, there will be like a couple minutes of hold period before I can actually put this in the piping bag and pipe it on the unicorns. You can see it expanding right now. So this is like, this is just like a bath bomb reacting. It's effervescence in this hot mix. Okay, so everything seems to be well combined. So I'm just gonna leave it there, start my timer, and I'll be back. 
My mix has settled and I will now take half of it and put it into my piping bag. Let's plop this in. It looks so good. <laughs> oh, and um, my piping tip is a Wilton 1M. I'm using a 16 inch Wilton um, piping pastry bag. And as, as I do on my soapy cupcakes, I just like to fill the middle and then I just go once around and end with another dollop. So I'll do one row and because the exterior of this bubble icing does solidify quite fast, uh, I'm going to put down my piping bag and add my little unicorn charms on top like this. Take my little ears, everything is ready to go and place them on both sides of the horn deep enough so that they stay in place. Just as I was piping the purple, um, my piping bag decided that he was taking his retirement. So I will finish this batch a little bit later, um, but I will decorate using biodegradable uh, glitter in a little spray bottle and add a little bit of magical glitter <laughs> to these cute unicorns because unicorns need to shine. When it comes to painting the face of the little um, unicorns or any mica painting on bath bombs, now I like to keep my uh, mix of 99% alcohol and the mica. Uh, this is a black mica from Nurture Soap. I like to keep them in these little airtight containers so I can reuse them over and over again and the alcohol de doesn't evaporate. Um, you need to have a steady hand and if you don't, ask someone who does. <laughs> And I just paint the little eyes and the little lashes using a brush that has, you know, a long and thin hair on it. And for some reason, I always have a little bit more of a difficult time for the left eye, but I think they turn out okay. I'm down to my last row and one of the tricky parts is because eventually my gloves do get stained with all of the black mica and it is quite challenging not to put that black all over the bath bombs and just keeping it you know for the eyes and for the painting so In terms of packaging, I really wanted the unicorns to be able to stand on their own because if I would just like shrink wrap them and toss them in a bowl, I was worried that the little horns and ears would get damaged. So I made these uh, labels that I printed on a 100 pounds cardstock paper. Uh, so I have the name of my uh, product, which is a foaming bath bomb called I'm a Unicorn. And this one is in um, the Galactic Grape fragrance. And then the other one is Fantastic Fruits. This is what I decided to call these. And so I make my labels and I kind of wrap it around and I use just a little bit of, bit of tape to hold it in a 
circular shape and then I just take uh, my bath bomb and I sit it right onto the cardstock. Here is the National Shrink Wrap um, system. I am using the biodegradable biolefin shrink film and actually I cannot wrap these today because the frosting was piped like in, within the past 24 hours and these will need to dry for a couple more days uh, before it is hard enough to be able to sustain packaging. So basically what I do is I carefully uh, place them. So I'm just going to show you but I'm not actually going to do it. So here is my wand which, is, which, ha which has the heat element and I place the bath bombs this way and I line three up and then I seal and I seal each of them and then I just shrink wrap them uh, very lightly. Um, of course the paper does, doesn't stay perfectly round but that's okay as long as they can stand up on their own that's fine with me and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've learned a couple tips and tricks on making bath bombs today. If you would like to purchase these cute little bath bombs, they are listed on my website. You can just click the link up there or go to the description box and I will also leave a link to my web store. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, but always remember that the description box already has lots of useful information, links, references um, to the material I use, to the supplies I purchase. So you can check that out before asking your questions and I will do my best to answer in, you know, one week time frame after the release of this video. I do have lots of videos going on so I don't always have time to go back and answer questions on older videos, but when I can, I do so. I will see you again very soon and for those of you who are attending the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild's annual conference in Dallas, Texas, mid-May. I will see you there soon, I hope. Don't be shy, come and say hi and we can chat and I'm really, really excited to be there uh, with you all very soon. If not, well, you can catch me in my next video. Bye-bye.